Hey guys, tuning in here to give you a little, uh, little something different today. I'm gonna talk a little bit about some lifestyle stuff, and if you guys are just looking to only hear tactical information and stuff like that, then uh, this probably isn't the video for you, but this is a little more personal for me, and it's something uh, that is a big deal to me, okay? So, one of the main reasons I ever went public on social media and started putting stuff out there as far as about myself, um, really the, the, main, the only reason was and is to help people. So um, that I'm going to get into some kind of mentoring type stuff and I've had a lot, I get a lot of young guys that are like, hey Bone, I want to be like you when I grow up and you know, whatever. And it's that's the nature of, uh, of the internet and it kind of happens, comes with the territory. So, you know, none of us really let it go to our head. Uh, me especially, I don't think that anybody that has, you know, and I have very, you know, not, not any kind of crazy followers, but some followers and I get those comments. So I'm actually doing this for the younger guys and, and well, not just for the younger guys, but for guys who have lived maybe like I have and gonna, just gonna kick back here, smoke a cigar, um, probably, you know, shoot the breeze and talk to you guys a little bit about, uh, you know, my take on dating kind of thing. This is going to be a little bit of a, a discussion. I'm going to involve Tinder and my experiences with Tinder, which is, which was at one point in time, uh, something I was very active on and, uh, basically going to give you the lowdown on the party lifestyle, the whole wine, women and song thing. And for a lot of years in my life in particular, that got, that got out of control, the, uh, the party lifestyle. And I'm, I'm going to give you guys kind of like the lowdown on that basically. And, uh, where I'm at now, where I was, and, and what I've come from and through and learned and all that kind of stuff. So bear with me here. I don't know if I have any fellow cigar aficionados in the house, but this is a Monte Cristo number two. Okay. One of my favorite smokes. It's uh, obviously it's out of Cuba, which a lot of people think that the trade embargo will, you know, auto automatically make Cuban cigars easy to get, uh, even though, you know, it's a supply and demand issue really anyway. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is, you know, Cuban seed tobacco, there's a lot of good stuff grown in the Dominican and, and there's actually some great cigars I've recently encountered in Honduras and a lot of places. So, uh, but anyway, let's, let's get into the, to the stuff here. Let me tell you a little bit about um, when I was when I was heavily dating and we'll call it dating, heavily partying and uh, and kind of like my thoughts and and where I where I was at at one point in time where you know living that lifestyle of you know uh, the fast chasing the fast life, uh, wine, women, and song, if you will. Um, basically, uh, I was on this dating app called Tinder, you guys may have heard of it. And in my primary line of work, I was traveling a lot. And, uh, well, not just my prime, I mean, everything I do, I, I generally tend to travel a lot. So something I would do was at one point I was even swiping ahead to different locations I was going to be going to. And Tinder is this dating app and I'm not in any way promoting it. It's actually, I don't use it at all. And it's actually, uh, really, uh, kind of disgusting example of the as kind of low as humans can go it's basically a meat market uh app for um yeah just a very shallow uh, application you use on your phone to to select people completely based on their looks you know there's a bio like this that nobody reads well, this is a generalization but a lot of women in the dating game are wanting you know the top of this or the best that as far as you know the, the whole attraction thing goes women are looking for a guy who's tall dark you know complected dark hair uh this is statistically speaking and this is from actual compilation of data that i've read so <laughs> it's not just pulling it it's not roma data i'm not pulling that out of my butt here but uh women like a guy that can make them laugh a guy that can dance uh and you know, obviously one of the main things that women look for is a guy that is uh, financially stable or wealthy. You know, we have the whole gold digger cliche. So 
you guys love hearing my stories and whatnot, so let me take you back to, uh, let's go to the Caribbean islands, for example. I'm uh, just getting done doing some private security work. I got a vacation coming up. It's been hot and heavy. I need, you know, some R&R. &R. I'm uh, definitely, you know, mentally, physically exhausted, very stressed out. Uh, just, you know, end of some hard, very hard work. And uh, heading out to the Caribbean islands. Uh, I still love the Caribbean. I'm out there a lot. And uh, this, I don't want to put this one island in particular out there on, on roast right now, but uh, because it's a small island. Um, but I would swipe ahead on Tinder a lot of times or, and then at a certain, eventually I built up enough contacts in different places that I was at. But what I would do was I would pick three, I would set up three dates for one night, dates. And this was my strategy. I'm, I'm a very tactical, technical person. Everything I do, I have a strategy with. And you guys obviously have seen that from where I've taken Bone Tactical and, and you know, kind of just very strategically taking over in, in all of the areas that, that we work in. Uh, you know, knife making and, and private security and Overland Expedition, to name a few. Uh, now changing the game with some uh, clothing that's, you know, materially and structurally the top of the line and, in my opinion, cooler than what's out there. And, uh, and also at a price point that nobody can touch handmade type stuff. So yeah, that's an example of, of my strategy. But as it applied to my dating, I would, I would set up three dates for one night. I would swipe on Tinder, I'd just swipe, 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 talk to a couple girls, set up three dates, and you say, well, why would you set up three dates for one night? Isn't that counterproductive? Well, if we look at the stereotypical uh, female, not the female that anybody would actually be looking for, but the stereotypical, in a bad sense, female today. We, we are probably looking at a, a girl who's swiping on Tinder as well, and she's doing the same thing, just trying to find the best she can find, right? So, if I'm going to Vegas, for example, which I've done this in Vegas, and I might even up it to five in a night, because, you know, I might be swiping against Dan Bilzerian, and... Um, I got this, I, I mean, if I got all my eggs in one basket, I'm trying to hang out with one girl tonight and telling her, you know, this is what we're going to do all this, set it all up. God forbid I buy a table that's $5,000 at a club. Dan Bilzerian swipes over. Oh, hey, you want to, I'm going to come pick you up in my helicopter. Well, I'm SOL and I'm out of there. You know what I'm saying? That There's no more, I, I, I'm swinging in the breeze with nothing to do tonight. So that was kind of how it got, uh, got started, but... I would, I would literally just set it up in the order of whatever I ranked it. And it was, I mean, this is a terrible thing here to do. It, it was, it was unfulfilling from the beginning, but it was, it was a pursuit of something that I didn't know what I was pursuing. And I was just chasing to chase. And it was almost like the same with action. I wanted to get in the action. I wanted to have the most dangerous jobs, the most dangerous areas I could work in. Uh, I want to go to the, if, oh, no other security contractors are working there, I'm going to go there and do it and start a business and work it. Is oh, nobody will work for this guy, I'm going to do it, I'm going to take this job. So, and it was, un, it was all unhealthy choices at, at previous times in my life. So, basically, you know, I would, I would do that, I'd set up the, the date, I would uh, go out, you know, hang out with the one, or if one canceled, the two canceled. And, and then I started to get bitter towards women because I would think, hey, it's, it's not me, it's your fault because you guys are doing this, you know, every time. And it would always work out to where it was just one. And, or on the other end of the spectrum, if I had to cancel with one, it made me look more cool. So, I mean, it's just really backwards psychology. And then again, from the beginning, those are not the kind of girls that, that I'm even interested in talking to or getting to know or anything like that at this point. But uh, it was it was all part of that chase and chasing that you know that high if you will not necessarily a drug high but uh but a high of the conquest you know oh yeah I hung out with this girl tonight and we hooked up uh, and now I'm on to the next one or you know hey maybe I I've hooked up I've pulled a hat trick hooked up with three Tinder chicks in one in one night okay so that's and and I've done all that, you know, and it's it's just not fulfilling, and and it really it pains me to know that that's what I was known for, 
with some of my guys that I work with and some of my friends and even, you know, some of my family members were like, yeah, you know, Greg's known for being a little bit of a, a man whore or, you know, things like that. And it's, you know, that hurts at this point, at the point where I'm at in my life today, that, that hurts for me to even say that. But the whole point of anything I'm doing personal and about me is to help others not make the same mistakes I did. And, and I'll tell you, I've been there. I've been in the, you know, in Vegas and I've done the whole, you know, the hat trick in Vegas and I've done the, you know, the whole, I mean, I'm not even gonna go into all the, the, the stuff because it's just not appropriate. It's not, it's not stuff to brag about, not stuff to be proud of, but I've done all of the stuff that supposedly is amazing and supposedly is so cool and that supposedly every guy wants to get into and, and end up doing and all of this and, you know, it's unfulfilling. So at the end of the day, we need to evaluate what we're looking for and what our goals are and where I'm at right now, I, fo I focus on, and I focus on first and foremost, God and God's plan for my life and that's because um, I am a, I'm a Christian and basically and not even basically God saved me from from a world of pain and I'm only here today because because of God's will I mean I've had so many people try to take me out even you know my own as you guys will will come to see in the next few well depending on when I post this video you'll have either heard heard a lot of it already or you may have heard it from rumors or whatever, but even my own government, you know, uh, trying to take me out, which I don't know of anybody that survived their own, you know, the U.S. government trying to, to uh, end everything. And, and they did. They ended a lot for me. They, they, they took a lot of my belongings. They, they took a lot of my, just illegally, they put me in, in, in prison illegally. So, deny that I was there and just oh, a whole bunch of stuff so you know not and, and all this is because of my in my my belief is that it's all because of my bad decisions and it's karma I mean it really is it you get what you, you reap what you sow you get what you pay for and if, you know you want to go the easy route easy women are it only ends in pain and it doesn't you know it doesn't matter if you're having a threesome with bikini models you know there's five minutes or maybe three or four hours of, you know, oh man, that you know, this is something I've dreamed of my whole life. And then you start to realize, well, for me, it was like, damn, I wish I could tell my friends about this or nobody will believe me or type this and all that. And just a completely twisted mentality. And then I'm like, you know, afterwards you get that emotional hangover. And then you're like, man, do why am I even doing this? And then now from here, where do I go from here? So Where do you go from that? You know, what, what, what are your goals if your goals are sin, if your goals are purely selfish? And the thrill of the chase is only the thrill. Of, I mean, it's, it's just ter it's terrible overall. And what it took me to learn was that you ha it has to be something bigger than yourself. And we all, everybody knows that deep down inside. Everybody knows that we've got to, we've got to, We've got to be searching for something deeper than ourselves. We all feel good when we help other people. We all, there's something deep inside that lets us know that we're not alone in the universe, that we didn't really create ourselves. Anybody that, that you got all these people that are agnostics and atheists and they're just very angry people. And that's because they're only denying the problem that they have with themselves to themselves. To begin with so you can't argue with a person like that you can't argue with a liberal is a kind of a, a right-wing saying and, and it's taken from these crazy left-wing liberal beliefs that these people have where they don't even believe them themselves and when you have that you just you basically I mean nobody can tell you what's right or wrong nobody can tell you anything Nobody can tell you left, right, or upside down because you're arguing with yourself, first of all. You're not opening to reason, so you're not open to reason. So, you know, that's kind of the thing with me. And um, maybe I'm going on a rant here. Let me guys, let me know. Uh, but really, guys, the whole – you have to evaluate what you want out of what you're looking for. And you really have to just kind of – 
you really have to kind of think, you know, what are my goals? And, and I'm at the point in my life right now where I know God has a plan for me. I survived, you know, multiple life, life in prison sentences at this point in my life. I've survived multiple people trying to kill me. I've survived money on my head. I've survived what about, you know, all of these things. And just why, you know, why am I still here? Why when I was throwing it all away, when I was doing all the wrong things to make money and then I was, and I was uh, throwing all this money away at the party life and the, the, the you know, do, just traveling the world and do you know doing crazy things and just trying to have fun you know and that's to me that's not even I still travel but now my my I, I ask myself what's how does this fit into God's plan for my life and I honestly believe that with what I'm doing with social media and my outreach for you guys you know if if I can be a person that can sit here and tell you me the person who's probably done more wrong somebody that's supposed to be in prison for the rest of their life multiple times over if you listen to what uh, half the false charges against me are and, and you know some of the charges against me are straight up true I you know the guy I shot when I was 18 I shot him he was trying to kill me it was me or him and uh, you know then I went on to uh, then I went on to I was facing life in prison for that, uh, 25 years to life, and and uh, I can see see it now. That and I, I knew it then, and, and maybe I I could see that it was a God thing. But at that around that time in my life, when I was supposed to be doing life in prison, um, a, a miracle occurred in one sense, and in another sense some negative opportunities in retrospect, but I wouldn't have any of my experience if I didn't take them, but they, I, they led to me doing some bad things but, and making bad decisions, but they were, I was approached by some individuals who had the power to, to give me a future despite the fact that I was supposed to be in prison for the rest of my life. And I worked with or for some of those individuals and, uh, Got to be careful what I say here, but, um, but I, 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 and it wasn't through any, it was on, it was a God thing that kept me out of prison, but I ended up not going to prison, uh, for, for something I was supposed to be, uh, in life in prison for. And then that happened a few more times. And, and, uh, and then I did things working for, you know, actually working for organizations and people that don't exist, uh, that, well, we all know they exist, but supposedly you know, bedtime story type stuff. That was not good stuff to do. And, uh, and stuff that I'm not proud of. But learning experiences, you know. And, and, I, and it really, seeing the evil in the world really made me the person I am and allowed me to 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 be able to create the company I've created which in turn is allowing me to to get my story out there and help you guys I mean I got some of my stuff that I carry every day here it's multiplying neck knife bone breaker keychain I got my traveler's money belt with the equivalent thickness of about ten thousand dollars U.S. dollars. No, probably twenty thousand dollars U.S. dollars, but it's in foreign currency, so it's hardly nothing. But uh, yeah, I mean, stuff like this, you know, it can be anything can be used for good or bad. I could transport stuff in here that I'm not supposed to, but I don't. I use it to protect myself against the evil in the world. I, I use it to, if. Now nobody knows what I have here. You know, it's it's the same thing. Now I can use that knowledge to help others. I'm going to share my my knowledge of the evil, the the, the of how predators work, um, and things of that nature, and uh, I'm going to use it to help you guys. You know, and uh, so you know, guys. 
Let me know what you think about this new series, and I'm, I'm just going to start talking to you guys, letting you guys know, you know, some of my, try, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to affect you. If you guys have any problems in your life that maybe somebody like me who's been there, somebody who's, you know, been down that road of, of you know, facing prison time and being in, you know, foreign prisons and foreign countries and, and being uh, chased and, and captured, you know, by the, by, by different countries' governments and things of that nature, you know, I mean, I, I remember, you know, when I was, the first time I was facing life in prison, it was a terrible feeling, you know, and I, and I, I, I just, at that time, I was like, God, why can, what can I do to change this? Do you really have a plan for me? And he, you know, he's, God didn't speak to me. I don't hear voices, but he made it very clear to me that, yes, I still have a plan for you, but you need to quit screwing up. And we'll never quit screwing up 100%, but every day is a challenge. You know, we're fighting a battle every single day that, is a battle out of this realm that we can't see. And if we're not going into it prepared like that, then we're just, first of all, we're a slave to our lives or to the system. We're a slave to the world. Don't be anybody else's slave. If you don't even know the battle that you're fighting, how can you win? So first of all, don't, don't be somebody's slave. Don't be anyone's slave. And in order to be your own man and that kind of thing, you know, not you doing, you know, true strength. I've even said this in my channel video. True strength is displayed. The real strength is when I can pick somebody else up. If, if I see this guy and he doesn't have clothes or he doesn't have food or this guy doesn't have a ride or he's falling apart or I can help him in some way or this young man here is, uh, is struggling with trying to get, feel like he's important to get his ex acceptance through women and, and enjoying, um, you know, the back on topic with this, the, the party life, it's an unfulfilling thing, guys, okay? So you got to understand, if I have, if this is, if this is alcohol, and I have a drink of alcohol, I'm going to get a little, a little taste of something, okay? You know, if this is a drug, I get that little taste. Okay, that's something. I like it, whatever. If this, if, if it's women, if it's whatever, if it's money, you get that little taste. There's no ceiling in any of those things, and none of them get better as they get bigger, okay? So it's new to me, maybe, and I get that, you know, new car smell. But is it really something... Obviously, it's not sustainable. Any of us know that if we stop and think about it, but can it help us? You know, what is it? What am I chasing? If you're, if, if, if the more I drink in what, what am I going to benefit? Do I feel good? Well, if I'm an alcoholic, then I maybe have to drink to just to be normal and to function. But maybe I deal with my problems through alcohol or something like that. But that goes back into being a slave to the system. So if you really look at, guys that you look at some of these guys that and i hope that i that i have never been that person for you but if i have if at some point in time if i've said something on social media that you've seen or something that gave you the impression that it's a status symbol to have good looking women and i i'm trying right now to make my i like to do photography with models and things of that nature and it's that was also a bit that has also been something that now i'm struggling with and i'm trying to going to be very open with you guys here. I'm trying to funnel that in a way to where I can still do something that's classy, something, some sort of an art, you know, eye-catching, something cool, but not something that uses a woman as a object or objectifies women or something like that. So, this whole, um, this is a whole learning process for me. I, I'm telling you guys, I came literally straight from having three dates lined up every night to, of different women, 
and you know, sleeping with all these different women, meeting them off Tinder. You know, I was working bars and clubs, and there was a time in my life when I was I was a strength and conditioning coach. The, there's times in my life where I wasn't doing a whole lot of traveling as well. So there was a time when I was a strength and conditioning coach at the University of Utah, and I would have around three girls every single night come up to the club to see me because I'd be like, hey, uh, you know, I got to work tonight. I'm working at the university in the daytime. I'm working clubs at night. And why was I working at the club? Literally just because I liked that environment. I loved that environment. I wanted, I would have some drinks at the club before I went into work, have a couple more at work, whatever. Uh, talking to the, you know, talking to girls at the bar, having sex with girls. There's clubs that actually I'm famous all over the internet now for having sex with a girl, uh, at a club upstairs at a club while I was working security and and it's not like I got in trouble with the club or anything they, they that club still loves me I was <laughs> one of their best bouncers and they'll tell you that but uh but I had permission to use the the top floors to to hook up with chicks I would just check in and say hey guys give me you know half hour I'm gonna be upstairs doing my thing so I went from that and it's it's just unfulfilling man it's like what kind of a life is that I'm I'm embarrassed that I'm known for that that's what I'm known for it at clubs that I work security at was you know knocking people out knocking dudes out and uh, and you know all over the internet I'm known for knocking dudes out and 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 having sex with chicks at clubs and and all the guys I've worked with and and stuff like that and it's like what kind of a life is that, man? And if I can go from that, if I can go from being that guy that everybody knows is going to probably knock a dude out or if, you know, it was that mentality where I was like, you know what, if I hope somebody is physical with me to where they throw a punch at me or something like that, because I'll talk crap with the best of them. And I knew never to, I've never in my entire life hit anybody that didn't hit me first in my entire life. Never, 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 never shot a guy, lived that music video lifestyle. And it's just not, it's not fulfilling guys. It's not fun. It's not cool. You're constantly chasing something you don't want. You're chasing dirty, loose women. You're chasing hangovers and, and, and drug addictions and, and, you're chasing a status that you don't even want. You're chasing, you got to do stupid stuff to look cool that you don't even like to do anymore, but you got to do it because, you know, the whole, that whole lifestyle is, you know, you know, if you're known for, you get locked into what you're known for, you know, if you're known for hooking up with hot chicks and then you got to, you always have to be with hot chicks and then. You start, for example, I, I would hang out with girls that were good looking that I knew just to go out with a couple of good looking girls because that, that I didn't really like or that were kind of stuck up or not, not, you know, not good women, morally unsound women and maybe fun for a few minutes to hang out with. I don't know, but in retrospect, none of it was fun. In retrospect, it was a, it's a pain in my soul and a huge waste of time. So, guys, I mean, if you're in that lifestyle, you know, get out. And the easiest way to do it is people, places, and things. All right, go to another country like I did or start a, your, move your business to another country. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be that drastic, guys. Cut off those people. Try to move if you can and change the places you go and the things that you do your activities you know get a gym membership if you're already in the gym um if you're in that whole aesthetics so where i have to look elite with this that and the other quit using steroids <laughs> quit think quit trying to um compare yourself with other people it's you know your whole fit your fitness goals should be your fitness goals and not the next guy's fitness goals so you know th there's just a and the whole the reason I'm sharing this, guys, I don't think that I'm Mr. Perfect. My life is not perfect. And quite the contrary. If I can come from where I came from to a person who's supposed to be dead in prison, all this stuff. Um, if I can come from that, 
and come and tell you, hey, there's hope, there's light at the end of the tunnel, then if I can do it, you can do it. There's nothing special about me. I have survived the situations I've survived because of God, okay? I, at 15 years old, I was put into a, a treatment facility. I spent a year in a basically a place where it was a bunch of orphan kids that were criminally violent and criminally insane and things of that nature in, in Florida. And uh, Sunshine Youth Services has since been shut down because of the abuse that the uh, the staff members would, you know, abuse the kids. And yeah, they, they abused the crap out of us. It was rough. And uh, it was a hard time in my life. And that was kind of the first time I saw the evil in the world at 15. Okay, guys? So I went from there. And at that point, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to let anybody bigger or older or tougher or badder than me hurt me. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to figure out whatever I can do. I'm going to I'm going to learn. I'm going to be a machine, a weapon. This I'm not going to take crap from anybody. And I lived that life and I made a name for myself in all the wrong places, okay? And and uh hurt a lot of people. Hurt a lot of people. And uh you know Maybe they were people that were on a path that, you know, I got hurt in the process too. And when you're in that life, you get hurt. And those people, the guys that I've fought or hurt or shot or things of that nature, um, they all had what they had coming to them. Does, am I saying that to, to where they can't become a better person? No, I'm talking to you guys if you're out there. You know, one of the dudes that I... Uh, that any of the guys I've knocked out, whatever, you know, been, if I've been in a fight with you, if you're, you know, whatever, um, hey man, there's hope for you too. But another big thing is for you kids, man. And I'm, maybe it's, for me, it's not the years, it's the miles, but I'm 31, which I'm about 70 in normal people years, maybe older, but... When I say kids, I mean, you know, 15 to 25, guys. I'm talking to you guys here. The decisions that you make right now, 15 to 25, are going to formulate the rest of your life. If you want to be a badass, strength is shown through helping others, okay? Not hurting others. You, you know, I, I thought I was a vigilante for, you know, at one point in my life that that there was people out there who were nasty, evil people and they needed dealing with because our police force sucks and because we don't have any justice system in the U.S. and all this stuff. And I thought, you know, hey, if somebody, if I come across one of these people, and I still have struggle with that, you know, if I come across a truly evil person, like I said, you know, when, God, when people have, you know, I've always defended myself in all those situations, physical altercations I've been in, and it's it's hard. If right now, if somebody attacked me, I, I can't honestly say that I wouldn't defend myself. I think some things, and I, I don't think that's wrong necessarily. You know, um, it's 100% wrong to go out looking for a fight, but it's not, it's not, it's not wrong at all to defend yourself, you know. We're called to, even as a Christian, we're called to stand up for the poor and the needy and the and the the, the fatherless and motherless and the uh, orphans, you know, and uh, the widows and the people that need help. We're, somebody's got to be strong for them. And that, you say, okay, I'm a, I want to be a badass. When I, that's what a badass is. Yeah, learn how to fight. Learn how to defend yourself. Learn how to do all that. Nine times out of ten, nobody's going to mess with you, you know what? There were times I had to, you know, beef up things. If some guy wants to fight me, you know, he's going to talk crap, and I'll talk crap back, and he'll talk crap back, and, you know, I, I could be an instigator, possibly, in certain situations that I have regretted, you know? And, uh, and then they throw a punch, and, oh, that's what I wanted. So it's... Not fulfilling, you know, and it's cool, it's cool to tell stories, you know, it's fun. And maybe sometime if you guys want to hear some of those stories, 
I'll tell some of the stories of some of the, uh, maybe the different aggravated battery arrests or some of the different guys I've knocked out or all that stuff, all the times I've been sued for hospital bills and all that, um, which all the bars I've worked out that worked at that have huge <laughs> medical bills, uh, civil medical bills and stuff, which some, there's some crazy ones there. I could get into that. If you guys want to hear some stuff like that, let me know. But uh, I, I gotta be careful to tread the line of not bragging. I mean, it's it's interesting and it's uh, I'm, I want to let you guys know right away I'm not bragging. It's not something I would do again. It's stupid, you know. But I want to tell you guys that's my testimony. I, I've been there. I've been that guy that everybody was like, "Pam, you know, like that guy's that guy's never gonna do anything with his life. That guy or that guy's never gonna do anything." That guy can't change, okay? That guy's so locked in that he's gonna be that enforcer for this group or this or that. Uh, he's gonna be, you know, that, you know, gray area, this kind of thing, and he'll never be able to be a good person or help others or have a nine to five. And maybe I never will be able to have a nine to five, but uh, but I can dang sure do some good in the world, and I am, and. Uh, and I, I appreciate all of you guys' support. I really want to say a 100% heartfelt. I'm putting myself out there when I make videos like this. And I'm doing it to help others. And I, there's always, every single one of my videos, there's at least one guy that comes on and just completely watches 10 seconds of the video, just watching, saying, okay, what can I say negative? What can I say negative? What can I say negative? Oh, I'm going to say something negative about... The way he's smoking his cigar. You're smoking your cigar wrong and you're a beep, 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 and what? I mean, guys, come on, like, give me a break here. I guess you gotta appreciate the haters. <laughs> the other end of the spectrum, hey, guys, I've also had a ton of support, okay? When I was, uh, I don't know when I'm gonna drop this video and I've got some videos on auto post talking about my, uh, abduction and all that so uh interrogation in foreign countries and all that kind of stuff so i gotta be careful what i say here but if it's our if Prado, Prado, I, might, I might post this after those actually so ah i don't know but yeah i be careful i don't want to i don't want to spill too much beans but what do you guys want to know So, if that helps at all, you know, thank you for the support. I really appreciate it. I'm new to this whole thing, obviously. I'm not any kind of, you know, trained actor or anything like that, obviously. Um, but I'm opening up to you guys, and I'm tough enough to handle the criticism. Whether, even if it's constructive or not constructive, I can, the haters don't bother me too much I don't let them get to me I I do really appreciate the support though guys and uh, I know I know both ends come with the territory but guys you know if there's anything I can I, that you want me to kind of touch on anything of that nature let me know probably getting really long winded here so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this one out call it a night I'm gonna finish my cigar but uh, guys hey I really appreciate uh, all the support. Question, comment, share. Bone out.